Hi guys, in today's video we're going to talk about my first encounter with brown jelly, what I did to try to stop it or control it, and the eventual outcome. So before I get into it, I'd just like to share with you guys my sweet new t-shirt. It's got a picture of a yellow tang. And if you guys are interested in where I got this t-shirt, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll respond to you. But uh, I just want you to know, like I did not, I paid for this t-shirt. There's no, there's no type of commission or anything there. I just, I like the t-shirt. And in fact, uh, this is just a trial one. I'm probably gonna get a few more. I know the artist has multiple pictures of saltwater fish. Anyways, let's get to the brown jelly. What is brown jelly? Brown jelly is typically an infection that stressed out LPS can contract. What you're gonna find is if you do have a stressed out LPS, so things that are fleshy, like the bower bankies I got, acan lords, euphilia, so frog spawn, torches, hammers, these are all susceptible to brown jelly and it is a bacterial infection. It's very important that when you notice the brown jelly, you react immediately. The first thing you don't want to do is to just blow the brown jelly all over your tank. I think that's gonna be, that could be a very common response for a lot of people. You see the brown jelly, you think it's just something that's stuck to your coral and you can just blow it off. What will happen if you do this is the brown jelly will then land on other LPS coral and then those coral are probably doomed. So the first thing you don't do don't blow it off. Okay, brown jelly is something you need to remove from your tank. Now, whether you want to try to save your coral, I have read multiple accounts, people online trying to save their coral. So they'll remove the infected coral from the tank, they'll blow the brown jelly off in a container, and then they'll dip it, uh, probably in iodine. So iodine is a um, antibacterial substance. However, the chances of success in those cases, from what I've read, are minimal. Potentially 5%, if not less. What I think you should do is remove the piece of coral. If it's a multi-headed coral, like a branching frog spawn or hammer, cut off the infected head, discard it. There's no point trying to save one head at the risk of potentially infecting all your other coral or some of your other coral. It's just not worth it. If it's a wall hammer, you could try to do what they've done where they remove the brown jelly as best they can and then dip it in iodine. What I think is by the time you see the brown jelly, the insides of the coral have already been badly infected. It's almost like gangrene in humans. So it's really up to you whether you wanna risk that. However, if you do do that, make sure you closely monitor that particular piece of coral. I'm gonna take you guys back to December. This is a week after I received my Bower Bankies from Marine Experience. And a week after I had noticed this red one, it was receding, which I thought was odd because all the other coral were doing fine. They were actually expanding and becoming normal. I wasn't sure what was going on. I thought maybe it was its location in the, in the tank. So I moved it. The following day when I came back to look at it, I saw the brown jelly. Now this was my first encounter with brown jelly. I've read about it multiple times. It's very noticeable. Like you'll know right away that that is what your coral is suffering from. And what I decided to do, that was a relatively big piece. It had multiple heads. 
and it looked to me like the brown jelly was only affecting one head. So I was hoping to save this baby head on the other side and what I did was I took it out, I removed it and I, I cut it with my snippers. I didn't notice any brown jelly on the piece that I had extracted. So I glued the piece to a frag plug. I did do an iodine dip for probably five minutes. I can't remember the exact timing. And then I put it back in the tank. I continued to monitor it. The next morning it looked fine. However, by the evening, that small piece had also brown jellied. So I immediately removed it and discarded it. And thankfully, none of the other coral have contracted this infection. Next, I, I just want to show you guys where the quarantine tank is at. We are currently on day 44 of quarantine. And in the quarantine tank, the coral have started to recede. I've noticed not very much, but I've, I've noticed it within the last week. I think what is happening is and this is a bad on my part. I haven't been testing the, the elk in that tank, but I have seen coralline algae start to grow and coralline algae will consume the alkalinity and calcium in your tank. So I, I believe that's what's happening, but I'm at a point now where at 45 days, the coral are gonna be safe or they should be safe from Brooklyn Nella velvet, flukes, bacteria. So the, the really dangerous things to the fish and most strains of ick, except for the one strain that managed to survive in a scientific study for 72 days as a tomont. And for those of you who don't know the life cycle of ick, the tomont stage is when, is after the parasite has dropped off the fish. It then swims to a surface that it can encrust on. And that's like an egg. So it's going to encrust on that surface and it's going to incubate. Depending on the strain, they have different incubation periods. In this one study, I would say this one outlier, because most other strains, they finish incubation before 45 days. So the egg basically explodes and then these little parasites try to find new hosts. So depending on your level of risk, how much risk you're willing to take, I was going to quarantine these guys for 76 days, but seeing how they've started to recede a little bit, I think 45 days I'm willing to accept that risk that we hopefully don't have a strain of ick that is uh, the long, long lasting strain. Okay, and I'm gonna put in the description below, I'm gonna link to a, a reef to reef thread that was started by a poster named Humblefish. And for those of you who don't know, Humblefish seems to be the expert when it comes to marine diseases that can affect your fish. So in his opinion, if you wait 45 days, you're probably going to be safe from most parasites. Unless there is that long living ick strain, then potentially 76 days would be the way to go. Let's check out the quarantine tank and we'll see how things are doing. Okay guys, here is the quarantine tank. The first thing I'd like to show you guys is this is the rock at the very top. There's a ton of life in this tank. In fact, I was very surprised at how many pods, copepods, are in this tank right now. But they're all there. And they're basically living off of the coral food that I feed, the reefroids that I feed the coral every five, six days. You guys can see here that, oh, there's a bristle worm. There's a bristle worm. But what I, I want to show you guys is 
there is a ton of coralline algae that has started to grow. And like I said before, what the coralline will do is it does absorb the alkalinity and the calcium. That's going to deplete your water of elk. And I think that is what's happening to the coral. So as, as the elk has depleted, I've only noticed the recession last week. So I don't think the levels are too bad, but I haven't checked them. The reason I haven't checked them is because I don't have an extra elk checker. And I don't want to risk potentially contaminating my tank if there are free floating parasites in this water. I'd... So that's all. Tomorrow is day 45. I am going to be moving these coral into the 93 gallon. Last thing I want to talk about is why did the red bower bank eat brown jelly? I have a theory. Brown jelly typically affects stress cell coral and these guys have been in shipping for two days, so over 48 hours. Also, potentially that guy may have been, his fleshy side may have been on the bottom for a long part of that shipping. During shipping, the box is going to shake quite a bit. So potentially he was already injured after, before he arrived. So he wasn't injured enough to the point where he was dead on arrival. But if the insides are injured, then they could be prone to infection, which is what I believe happened. Now, I have read on watching Tidal Gardens, they have a video on lobophilia, and they make a very clear distinction between Indonesian lobos and Australian. And, and then actually says that Australian lobos are incredibly sensitive. Uh, you look at them the wrong way and they will start to recede. Bowerbankies come from Australia. And based on their growth patterns, I wonder if they are close relatives to the Australian lobophilia. In which case, this could kind of make sense that they are a bit more sensitive. It's also kind of changed my perception on them. I was very bower banky crazy before, and maybe moving forward, I might just stick to the Acan Lords or Micro Musa Lords, depending on what you want to call them. But those guys, to me, are incredibly hardy. I have, I have read very few accounts of people having trouble with Acan Lords, and they're just as beautiful. It's they just have different growth patterns. But that is it for me, guys. So this is the quarantine tank. It's, it's doing great. I'm gonna continue doing water changes on it. I know moving forward, if I'm gonna get any SPS, any acros, any type of coral that's gonna absorb a lot of elk and, and calcium, moving forward, I will have to get separate test kits so I can test water. But also I do have bottles of alkalinity and calcium which I may have to manually dose in the future in this tank. I think I did drop the ball on this. Uh, if I had dosed some elk, I don't think that we'd be seeing any receding, but it's a good lesson. And at the end of the day, I don't have any concerns that these coral will expire. Touch wood. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll know in the upcoming January update if these guys have made it. So if you guys have made it this far, thanks a lot for watching. If you made it to any point in this video and you somehow are hearing this, thank you for watching. Thumbs up if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I will see you guys next time. Thank you.